I have to say, I love this place. Every day I arrive here and I just feel instantly inspired and good. And that's probably without any doubt, the most important about a studio by far. It should inspire you. It should be your place. It should be a sacred place where you make music. Don't get disturbed. That is focus number one, without a doubt. But then focus number two should be actually something that way, way, way too many people overlook. It's not about the gear. It's not about having big speakers. You probably already know what it's about due to the title of the video and maybe watching one or two of my other videos room acoustics. The best speaker on the planet in a bad room will sound worse than the worst speaker in the best room. A room can shape the sound a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Let's, let's do one quick example. Me in, in our chill room where we hang out, I'd say this is like a normal typical room. We got like some stuff there, we got pictures over here, a huge couch over there and you can already hear that that the sound is is bad and in here in the studio especially if i go into a corner the sound is amazing you only hear my voice and nothing absolutely nothing else this entire room acoustic topic is is highly complicated but there are some basic rules i'll try to teach you that you can apply to improve your studio by a lot by doing a little and spending a little but first let me actually show you what i've done to this room right here because this is like it's 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 pretty pretty extreme let's start at the back wall right here we have full 40 centimeters this entire block right here this is just absorption material, 40 centimeters. Then an air gap of another 40 to 50. And then again, mm, 30, 35 centimeters of more absorption just on the back wall. Then let's maybe walk by here. The side walls, same thing, 40 centimeters absorption, plus these specialized they're like plates in it they swing they absorb even more bass like the the low frequencies as well as the upper frequencies and obviously on the other side same thing the ceiling is 30 centimeters we didn't have more space i would have loved to make it also like 30 plus and the last cover is, is still missing there needs to be like a finish to make it look smooth um, probably would with like a, a specialized amount of, of holes in it to make it also diffuse a little because everything else is just absorption and here at the very front the speakers are built into the wall the wall itself is uh, wood in, in three layers it's this thick I, I would have loved to make it concrete but then the floor would have collapsed it's just too heavy and here it's it's basically a huge bass trap and within that bass trap is the speaker it's like 40 50 60 and at the very end like almost 1 meter 20 thick and all filled with like waveguides absorbing material everything in there and then the only thing missing is that gap right here between between the two speakers still not really sure what to do about it the main reason is behind it is kind of another room with more absorption in the corners and I just want to keep that view. I just absolutely love it. Which kind of links us to the very first point. You should feel comfortable. And I don't mind losing 5% of like perfect room acoustic and having, having a good view. But I will now actually measure it, test it, show you the results. And maybe it's good enough that I don't need to close it. Maybe it's bad. Maybe this gap is, is introducing weird stuff. Um, well, now in a second. Guys, 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 I spent the entire day testing. Just measurement mic here, sweet spot, ear level, facing straight forward. You can also put it upright, depends on the calibration kind of file, doesn't matter that much. And I tested like I have 12 tests right here. 
And I would love to go through them because it's so interesting how, how things can actually change. So let's actually start with the graph that I recorded. When was it? In June. This was where I already had like the absorption around. No ceiling, no front wall speakers on stands it's it's pretty all right um like ignore the top end 1k and up because i i did the test with both speakers on it just gives you these weird ups and downs in the top end but yeah i mean there's like a, a gap at 139 race at 48 and then a big bump again at around 30 we're here if we're measuring it's like from 100 to 140 this means plus minus 20 dB, like plus minus 20 dB is all right. It's like a treated room, but it's not perfect. Probably if you have no treatment at all, it will be a lot more. It can be plus minus 60, 70. It's like insane what these waves can do and bounce around in your room. So decent kind of graph. I then measured it again today. The first measurement was that red one right here. You can immediately see that it's it's improved right around between 80 and 100. It's pretty much flat. There is there's a little like probably a reflection or comb filter at around 400, probably the desk. And I was thinking maybe maybe it's also due to the monitor. You can see it's gone now. The next measurement is without the monitor. Let's let's blend out the very first one. So with and without monitor, red is with the green, dark green one is without. Not a huge difference. Slight improvement, but not not really worth it. But I have to say, when when I'm using the equipment and I'm leaning forward and I'm right behind the screen with both ears, I can hear it and it annoys me. So I'm, I'm trying to find a solution for that in, in the future. Then let's compare the next one. It's without corner absorption in the back. I just did that to test it myself. Like there's this, this space in between the two walls at the back. I try to fill it out more. I wanted to see if I put more absorption in there, if it changes anything, if I can even make like the lower frequencies flatter and get rid of that bump that is at the very low end, 26 hertz, which is really hard to, to correct because it's so low, the wavelengths are so long, you need a lot of material. But it didn't change anything. Basically spot on, same graph. Are you ready for the biggest change ever? This right here is a significant improvement. Top end, mid frequency stayed the same, but look at the low end. The low end went from like having 10 dB too much at 26 Hertz, right around the perfect spot for it. Also the dips at 32 and 36 are not eliminated. They're now, it's now going up a little, but it's a lot more in check, a lot more. You could now argue that we have from 25 Hertz and above a very flat response. It's maybe plus minus six dB over the entire frequency spectrum. And this graph is without any smoothing. And if you're now wondering how I actually did it, it has to do with the bass port. Let me show you. These speakers, I love them like good bass response and everything, but they're actually not 100% intended for wall mounting them. Putting speakers on a wall will increase their bass significantly, usually 6 dB, which is fine because you can lower it right here. There's a button where you can put it into a wall mount mode and lower the bass. But, and that's something I, f I forgot. I read about it once, but I, I didn't try it out because I thought it might actually not change that much. I really just stuck a towel in the base port. You can see there's like the base port. It goes down there really, really deep. And I just stuck something in there and it actually does the trick. Removed all of the problems, the big problems I thought I could never solve gone. I also called the people making these speakers and they told me, yes, that's, that's actually something that they suggest. If you put them in the wall, close off the base port, lower the base amount and get it flat again. That's like the best measurement I could take. 
there's still some strange dips. I think that's like the reflection of the desk. I'll test it more in the coming days, maybe put something above it to see if it's actually the desk and maybe, I don't know, drill some holes in it or cover it with something to also get rid of it if possible. But right now it's really extremely extremely good let's maybe look at the 10 to 200 hertz and here i mean yes we have like a, a, a drop at like 25 hertz it's expected that's that's the range of the speaker but if we look above 25 hertz we get it's so 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 smooth that's like the best graph i've ever seen in any studio we have here, it ranges from 100 and 110 to 121, maybe 22. Let's add the psychoacoustic smoothing that shows you what your ear actually is able to pick up and we make it even flatter. So we got in total 8 dB up down in the low frequencies plus minus 4 dB. Extremely, 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 extremely good. I would even argue that's as good as it gets. I know from other studios that they're not even close to this. And even the very best studios, according to everyone on the planet, the ones that um, built the Noisia studio, also the new Skrillex studio, Northward Acoustic, I found on their website, they shared once a graph Again, it's so hard to find these kind of things on the internet because it's like everyone is very secret about room acoustic. This one right here also shows with one 24th smoothing the 20 to 200 hertz region. It looks good to me. I mean, his, his graph is squished a little more even, so I, I can't match them fully. Wait, let's maybe take screenshots and overlay them. I matched them. I'm surprised myself. I'd say, without a doubt, mine is flatter. Same smoothing, same kind of everything. Uh, of course, like positioning the mic, the mic, the amp, like everything you use could introduce a difference, but that should be usually within a dB. Mine is the green one. The purple one is of that super expensive studio. I'm very proud, because that studio is like a highly professional by the best people on the planet, made, constructed from the ground up studio no no expenses spared and a budget 10 times 20 times as high as my studio right here that i built myself ah oh, what a relief <laughs> that's like whew, that's the best ever like i mean i get really nerdy and happy about gear but this room right here means means everything to me and it's it's good so finally another chapter closed i got it as good as it gets and I know a lot of people will now argue it's not necessary. Yes, you're right. To make good music, you don't need an acoustically treated room to perfection, but a tiny bit of treatment definitely helps getting the reverb decay times down so you can actually hear what you're doing. And the rest is then really just, just using your creativity and work. But I want to make sure that you know that first, it's really feeling good in your studio, room acoustics, and then the speakers, then the gear and the plugins. That's usually the order you should like focus on. And for music production, it isn't that important, but since I'm doing a whole lot of like mixing and mastering for other people since COVID started, I, I thought I owe it to the customers to be able to hear everything and, and make it as good as possible and that every thing I decide is a decision that I do because I want it to be there and not guessing because the room tells me something else. So extremely, extremely happy. And if you're interested to know how I built the entire studio, I captured every single day that I worked on it here on this channel. I link the playlist down below. Just go watch it from start to finish, planning phase, how I constructed the floor within a room, room kind of design, the ceiling, the absorbers, which kind of materials, it's all out there.